Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial today. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how you can create this cool uh, loading animation or loader as it's called. As you can see there are five circles over here which at some point with animation they become these bars like a sound equalizer or something. And in this tutorial I'm going to talk about uh, preprocessors uh, as some of the other previous tutorials and how powerful they are. Uh, so you can write your CSS code in one of those preprocessor kind of languages and then it will be compiled to the CSS that can be used. Uh, so let's get started. So first things first, I'm going to create a container because I always want to center my loading. So I create a container here and then inside that I will create uh, five divs with class dot. And this is the syntax, so I just multiply that by five and press tab. And you can see I already have uh, five dots in my um, HTML markup. The next thing I want to do is coming back here, I now go directly to CSS. As I said, I'm going to use a preprocessor called SCSS. So I go to the settings, as you could see, I press on the gear bar here, go to the settings and choose SCSS and save this. Now I can write in SCSS code. Let's define some stuff. Let's make sure that the like before the background uh, is actually like uh, one one one, just like that. So we have this background. Then I want to position the container in the center. I mean, maybe better start styling the dots. So I will set the dot uh, width to be maybe eighty percent, eighty pixel. Sorry. 80 pixel and the height as well to be 80 pixel and then give them a background of let's say gray so you can see that uh, later on this will show up as a gray I just need to fix this background gray uh, so you can see that we have like four divs um, one after the other the same way we see in the HTML here with that color the next thing I want to do, I want to make them um, rounded. So I can just simply say border radius 50 pixel, right? So now they have become um, round. And it's important for this tutorial to set the border radius to pixel 50 pixel rather than 50%. Many times when you want to make a round div, you kind of say 50 pixel, uh, percent. But at this time, because we're going to change the height of these, uh, and we want the borders to preserve this, but not the actual div, then um, we set it to pixel. Next thing I want to do is uh, define a, the container so that it goes to the center. So I say container, I'll set the uh, position to be absolute, as you can see here. Uh, then I say the left to be 50 pixel and top to be 50 pixel uh, and then I use transform translate minus 50 percent and minus 50 percent so this kind of centers these in the middle of the page or the center of the page now what I want to do is make sure that these sort of circles or dots will just align uh, horizontally instead of this and in order to do that, what I'm going to do is set the dot position to be absolute. So I just say absolute, absolute. And then you can see that it shows one. And that's because there is only uh, all of them are stacked on top of each other. And now here's the power of SCSS. Uh, and SCSS is literally like very similar to CSS, but it has some you know, language constructs like conditionals, like for loops. It has like, you know, if and else. So for the starter, let's define the number of dots I have uh, as a variable in SCSS. So I would say num dots colon five. That's the number of dots I have. And this is pretty much reflecting these five over here. So the more you have, you need to change this number of dots here. Now what I'm gonna do, I wanna loop over these five dots and in order to do that I can use four uh, and take a note at at sign over here I say four and then I define a variable called I from one so the first dot through the number of dots that I defined right so it, it basically loops over 
uh, all the dots that I have. And now I need to just define what uh, sort of position I want for each of those. So I know I can select each of those with div nth child, right? If I if I say zero, for example, uh, sorry, one, it will choose first one and then second one and then uh, so on and so forth. So I simply need to change this with this variable i. Uh, and the way you do that, actually you use this syntax. You do hash and then brackets or curly brackets and then you put the i. So now it basically loops over and then it defines each of these class for us. So now what I want to do is basically saying that I want to have a margin, as you can see here, these circles have a width, but also there is a margin in between them, right? So let's define a variable, as you can see here, let's define a variable called margin. Margin, let's say 90 pixel. And then actually, because we're going to use the width and height, let's make them variables as well. So I'm just going to say width is going to be uh, 80 pixel. And then instead, I'm going to change this with those variables. So I'm going to say width, and I know height is also the same as width, so I can simply say width as well here. So now, as you can see, we have the same thing as before, but just we just define some variables and use them down here. Next thing I want to do, I want to define the position of each of these elements that I have. And this is how I sort of uh, select them in my CSS. Of course, each of them has a class dot. As you can see, you can also, of course, incorporate that. So I can say, for example, div dot. And this will, this is the same thing. It is because if you have some other, you know, divs inside, um, then you know what you want to do. So here I just define left. I use the i variable, as you can see here, i multiplied by the width of the, the width that we define here, but also I will add the margin to it as well, the mar margin 90 pixel that I define. So you can see it kind of, if I, if you look at this, it actually puts them, puts the left of each one, uh, one after the other, but we don't want to do it for the first element, right? So the way we handle that is that I can just say left i minus 1. So now you can see that it kind of tries to center it, but then it doesn't have the, in order to center the parent container, it needs to have the same width as the elements inside it. So I need to go ahead and set the width as well here. I know there are five elements, so I just do num dots, and then I multiply that, but the margin that I have. So width plus margin, right? So this, as you can see now, it kind of centered it almost in the page, but I just, because I used minus one here, I didn't want to set the left for the, you know, for the first one, I started setting the uh, width from the, f uh, from the, not the first one, but the second one, which is index one. Then I can just remove a margin from this whole calculation, right? Now you can see that it is perfectly centered in our page. So again, I set the left of each of the dots to be um, I minus one, because in for the first one, when I choose one, one minus one will be zero. So the left of the first one will always be zero because we don't want to set a sort of a left for the first one. But then for the next ones we do it, but at the end when we define this, because we don't have the first margin, I just remove the margin and you can see it kind of centers it in the page. The next thing we want to do is define a animation. And that's the animation we pretty much see over here, as you can see. So basically I will define a keyframes. That's how you define animations in CSS scale. And then I say at 0%, I don't want anything to happen. At 20% though, what I want to do is I want to set the height of each element to something bigger, right? So what is something bigger? This initial uh, sort of this uh, height that I'm looking for, let's say we want to make it 16, 600 pixel, right? And then the next thing I want to do is I want to uh, set the background uh, color to be white. 
So initially they are gray, but at 20%, I want the height of each goes to 600. And then finally at 700%, I want to make sure that the height will become back to whatever it was, which is the width that we have defined up here. So because width and height are the same values. And the next thing I want to do, I just need to define this as an animation for our uh, divs with the class dot. So I'm just going to say animation. I call it scale, maybe two seconds, and I want it to be infinite. So now you will see that it starts giving us this kind of animation, right? But this is not exactly the same as we define over here, as you can see. So the trick is when I actually scale them over here, I also set a transform on it to move it a little bit up. So the same time the height gets bigger, I also sort of translate Y minus 60%, right? So now you can see that we have this cool animation over here. Finally, the next thing is to kind of put a delay as to when these will start one after the other. And that's pretty easy because we already have this div that loops over them. So it's as easy as me defining animation delay will be, let's say, 0 0.2 seconds and then multiplied by the variable i that we have over here. Now you can see that we have this cool sort of delay between those animations. So it's as easy as that. You can use SCSS. It's a powerful tool. Uh, usually when you have multiple elements that are the same and some effect that is similar in all of them will be applied with some sort of a delay or something, you can use SCSS. It makes it really easy. So if I, for example, go ahead and compile this, view the compiled one, you can see that it. otherwise I had to go and create all of these myself, as you can see here. But here... On the SCSS, it was much easier. Now, the final thing is I can easily now, and the reason why I made this so big is because I wanted to show you how it will look like. I can go ahead in the container and just set the scale to something really small, like 0 0.1. And you can see that now we pretty much have this um, sort of equalizer, sound equalizer animation. And honestly, this is one of the coolest uh, uh, sort of animations that I've created for a loader and sometimes I really love looking at it just for a couple of seconds. It's actually pretty smooth and nice and you could see as it's as simple as just figuring out what you want to animate and animate it. All right, uh, I hope you liked this tutorial. If you liked it, please uh, like this video and share this video if you, if you will uh, and stay tuned. Thank you so much and have a great day and night. Goodbye.